In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that has been made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness, to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light, the true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Good Sunday morning. Jesus, the Word, 100% God, steps out of heaven, takes on flesh of humanity, and enters the world. With this huge step of becoming flesh, we see that Jesus willingly set aside his divine rights. In a similar passage of scripture, the Apostle Paul writes, your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness. Jesus does not suffer from any type of divine identity crisis. He was very clear on who he was and who he is. Yet, Jesus did not hold on to this equality with God the Father, but he made himself nothing, literally emptied himself of his divine rights so he could be like you and me. We know that minimally this means Jesus gave up heaven. He, he took on the limitations of space and time, and in some cases, the limitations of knowledge and power so that he could identify with you and me. If Jesus set aside his divine rights, then we can rightly assume that as his followers, we must be willing to give up our rights, whether real or perceived. We must be willing to give up what we think is rightfully ours. To follow Jesus, to experience God at work in and through us, we must willingly yield our rights. If we're not very, very careful, these perceived rights of ours will create a barrier to us following Jesus. They'll become a weight that holds us back from him. One of the greatest tragedies of American Christianity is that we allow God's blessing to hold us back from genuinely following him. If we look through the Gospels, we see Jesus challenging people who want to follow him to give up specific rights or blessings. He's asked people to leave behind family, jobs, homes, money, safety, security, and comfort. His challenge was clear. If you decide to follow him, you decide to become part of his activity in this world. And that could cost you everything. What are some of the perceived rights that are keeping you from following Jesus? What rights or what blessings have the potential to hold you back from genuinely being his disciple. God in heaven, I worship and I praise your holy name. Thank you for sending Jesus the word who was with the Father before the world began. Jesus, you came to earth willingly in this human flesh so that a sinner such as I may be redeemed by your precious blood. Jesus, help me follow your example and lay aside what I think is rightfully mine, and I may be what is rightfully yours. In your precious name I pray. Amen. God bless you. Sunday morning.